Now we've done, we've gotten a great introduction to division. We've gotten a great introduction to division. We know how to divide. Congratulations, you know how to divide. Now we're going to get into some problems when the remainder is not zero. And it's going to be really, really easy. There's going to be no tricks or no problems or nothing really confusing here. So let's just go ahead and do it um, and take a simple problem first. Let's say you have 7 and you're going to divide by 3. Okay? 7 divided by 3. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the problem just like before, 7 divided by 3. And it's the same question as before. There's nothing different here. What you're doing is you're saying 3 times what number, which I'm going to write up here, is going to give me 7. 3 times what number is going to give me 7? Let's just go ahead and, and see if we can figure that out, okay? 3 times 1 is 3. That's not right because we're looking for 7, okay? 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. But that's not right because I'm looking for 7. 3 times 3 is going to give me 9. But that's not right because I'm looking for 7. You see you have a problem here, okay? Because 3 times 2 is 6, so that doesn't really work, okay? And 3 times 3 is 9, and that doesn't really work. So you might look at this and you might say, well, there's nothing here that can equal 7. 3 times nothing will equal 7, okay? That, and that's true. That's exactly right. So what you have here is a case where the division isn't going to have, you're going to have something left over after the division. That's the bottom line here, okay? So in a case when you can't find out exactly the right number to multiply by to give you what's underneath, you just do the best you can, okay? You do the best you can. How many times will 3 go into 7 without spilling over, okay? 3 times 2 would give us 6, okay? And that's just under 7, okay? 3 times 3 would give us 9. Well, that's too many because I didn't even have 9 to begin with, okay? That's too many. So what you want to do if you can't find a number to exactly equal is you just find the best number you can just underneath what you're looking for. So in this case, 6. 3 times 2 gives us 6. 3, we know that 3 will go into 7 um, two times, and that will give us 6. And we'll see, well, let's just see what happens when we do that. We'll go through the problem, okay? For right now, we're just going to work it like this. We're going to say 3 times 2 is going to give us 6. So what we do is we do just like we did before. We're going to put the 2 here, and we're going to say 2 times 3 is going to give us 6, okay? We're going to put a line there, and we're going to subtract, just like we did before, okay? 7 minus 6 is going to give you 1. You all know that, okay? Now, when you have a number down here below, you remember in all the other problems we had a 0, but now we have a 1, okay? So the question is, can 3 go into 1, okay? That's what you need to ask yourself next, okay? Can 3 go into 1? Well, here's one ball, okay? And the question is, can 3 go into 1? Okay, can 3 be divided into 1? The answer is no, because remember, division is kind of like you're making groups of 3 in this case, right? Well, if you only have one ball, you can't make a group of 3, okay? You, you can't even make a single group of 3, so you just can't do anything else, okay? So anytime you have a number and you're dividing into that number and, and the number that you're dividing into is less than the number that you're dividing by, you can't do that. You, you just can't divide anymore, okay? So basically you stop at this point. Okay, I'm going to erase this. And I'm taking this quite slow so that we make sure we understand. You basically stop at this point and say, okay, the remainder was equal to 1. That's why I had you do that before. The remainder is equal to 1. So when you write the answer to this problem down, the answer will be 3 divided by 7 is 2 with a remainder of 1. 2 with a remainder of 1. Now let's see why that's the case. Here let's draw 7 balls. This is 7 balls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 balls. Now let's divide by groups of 3. There's one group of 3. There's two groups of 3. Okay. I can't make another group of 3 because I don't have any more balls. Okay. So I just, I just leave him out here. So what this is telling me is when I divide by 3, here's one group of 3, two groups of 3, and one ball left over. That's what that means, okay? That's what the remainder means. When I divide 7 by 3, I can only do it two times, and that's why I have the 2, okay? But then I have one little ball left over, and that's called the remainder, okay? So that's what you write down, 2 with a remainder of 1 left over. So all that means is that when you do this division, it doesn't go an even number of times, okay? There's going to be something left over, okay? 
we're going to work a lot of problems like this, so if you don't get it just yet, um, don't, don't worry. What if you had 12 divided by 5? 12 divided by 5, okay? First thing you do is you put 12 under the house and you put 5 out here, okay? Now what we're trying to do here with the 12 is we're trying to say 5 times what number is going to give us 12, okay? Well, you know that 5 times 2 gives you 10, and 10 is, is just, just less than 12, okay? And 5 times 3 gives you 15, but that's too much, okay? You don't want to put a number up here that's going to give you, when you multiply, it's going to give you more than what you started with. You want to pick the number that just gives you just less, just, just, as, uh, 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 just a hair less from what you're looking for. So that's why we're going to put a 2 here. Okay? 2 times 5 gives us 10, which is just less than what we're looking for. If you were to put a 3 up here, then you would have 15, and that's too many. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't do that because you only had 12 to start with, so 3 times 5 would be 15. That's too many. Okay? So we put a 2 up there, and now let's go ahead and find what our remainder is. 2 times 5 gives you 10, so you always write the 10 down here. Okay? And now you've got to do some subtraction. 2 minus 0 gives you 2, and 1 minus 1 gives you 0, so you don't have to write that down. So we're left with a 2. Next thing you need to ask yourself is, can you divide 5 into 2? Answer is no, because 2 is just not enough. You have to, when you're doing division, the number underneath the house has to be bigger than the number outside because you're dividing into that number, okay? So five, uh, 2 divided by 5, I could never make five groups because I've only got two things to begin with. So you can't do this division. You can't take five and, and divide it into two. So basically you just stop, okay? You just stop and you say that the remainder is equal to two, okay? And the remainder is equal to two. So the answer to this problem would be two with a remainder of two, okay? Now let's figure out why that makes sense, okay? Let's go ahead and draw 12 balls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we're dividing by 5. So here is a group of 5. Here is a group of 5. Okay? One group of 5, two groups of 5. So it can divide in two times, but there's two balls left over. And so that's exactly what that is. Okay? So never forget. Whenever you're doing this, you pick the best number you can so that, so that when you take 5 times 2, it's going to give you a number just underneath the number that you're looking for, okay? So you have to use your multiplication tables. And then you do the subtraction, and you find out what your remainder is going to be. Okay. I'm going to do a few more problems here to kind of get the hang of it. So you see, remainder really isn't that hard. It just means... How many things do you have left over after you do this division? Okay? So let's say you had something like um, 39 divided by 6. So what you would do first would you would you would have a 39 underneath the house and you'd have the 6 over here. Okay? You'd have the 6 over here. So 6 times what is going to give you 39? Okay? If there's a number that'll do that, then that's going to be the answer. And if not, then you just pick the best number you can so that um, you just get right under 39 there. Okay? So let's just pick some numbers here. 6 times 5, let's just pick a number to start with. 6 times 5 would be 30. Okay, that's pretty close to 39, but let's see if we can get closer. Okay? 6 times 6 is going to give you 36. Okay? And that's even closer. So that's even better. Okay? But let's see if we can get closer. Okay? 6 times 7, okay, um, is going to give you 42, okay? 6 times 7 is going to give you 42. That's too much because we only started with 39, so we don't want that one. We want to get just close enough, okay, but not too much, okay? So 6 times 6 gives you 36, and that is the closest we can get. So we're going to put a 6 over here because we're dividing into 39. We put it over, over the right-hand number there, and that's going to give you 36, Okay, so let's go ahead and see what our remainder is. 6 times 6 is going to give you 36, and we subtract this, okay? Let's see what our remainder is. 9 divided by 6, I mean 9 minus 6, is going to give you 3. 3 minus 3 is going to give you 0, and so on. So 
the remainder is basically going to be 3 because you can't do any more divisions, you see. You try to take 6 and divide it into 3, you can't do that because this number is too small. You can't make six gr a group of 6 things when you only have 3 to begin with, okay? So you can't do any more division here. And uh, what you end up saying here is the remainder is going to be equal to 3. So the total answer to the problem is going to be 6 with a remainder of 3. Okay? 6 with a remainder of 3. Okay? Now what you would do to check this graphically is you could take and you could draw 39 circles all along the board. And you could divide it up into groups of six, into groups of six, into groups of six. And what you would see is that you would have six complete groupings, okay? But there'd be three balls left over, okay? There are three balls left over. And that's all remainder is. It's just how many things do you have left over, okay? We'll do a couple more here, and then we'll move on to more challenging problems. Let's say you have 43 divided by 10, okay? So we're going to write that as 43 underneath the house and 10 on the outside, okay? So I'm taking 10, I'm dividing into 43. How many times can that happen? 10 times 1 gives you 10. 10 times 2 gives you 20. 10 times 3 gives you 30. So we're getting close. 10 times 4 gives you 40. That's real close, okay? 10 times 5 gives you 50, and that's too many because we only have 43 to begin with. So 10 times 5 gives you 50. You don't want to use that. So 10 times 4 gives you 40, okay? So I'm going to put a 4 up here. We think that's as close as we can get, okay? So let's check. 10 times 4 is going to give you 40, and then we're going to subtract here. 3 minus 0 is going to give us 3. And 4 minus 4 is going to give us 0, so we're just not going to write that. Now, you can't do any more division between this and this because this number is too small. You have 10, you're dividing in, and you only have 3 to begin with, so you can't do any more division. So we just say the remainder is 3. So the answer to this problem is 4 with a remainder of 3. 10 can go into 43 four times with 3 left over. So it doesn't divide a complete number of times you have three balls left over, or three pencils left over, whatever it is you're dividing. Okay? One more problem in this section, and then we'll be done. Let's say you have 30 divided by 9. Okay? First thing we do is we rewrite things. We say 30 underneath here, and we're going to be dividing by 9. Okay? So, same thing. 9 times what gives you 30? Well, let's go ahead and try. 9 times 1 gives you 9. 9 times 2 gives you 18. 9 times 3 gives you 27. Now we're getting real close, okay? 9 times 4 gives you 36, okay? And uh, that's too many, right? Because we only have 30. So let's go back a minute and let's say 9 times 3 gives us 27. So we're going to put a 3 up here because we're dividing by these, this number here. And we're going to go ahead and see what our remainder is. 3 times 9 is 27. Okay. Now we need to subtract 27 from 30. We have start in the right-hand column as before, and we can't do the subtraction, so we're going to have to borrow. We're going to take 1 away from this 3, and we're going to give it to the 0, making him a 10. Now 10 minus 7, you can do on your fingers and say that's equal to 3. Okay. And 2 minus 2 is just going to give you 0, so you don't even need to write that down. Now, you have a number 3 down here, and you can't divide this 9 into that 3 any at all, because you just can't, because this is a number that's too small. You're trying to make a group of 9 things, and you only have 3, so you just can't divide any more. So you're just going to say the remainder is going to equal 3. So the total answer to the problem would be 3 with a remainder of Three. So basically all that means is if you were to take 30 balls and write them all down and make a group of 9 and another group of 9 and another group of 9, you could do that three times, but then after you do that, you're going to have three balls left over. 